Welcome to the Trailblazer podcast. Today you get Aaron and I. Yeah. A little cozy, Our little solo show. conversation. <laughs> solo duo show. How are you doing today, Mom? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm really happy that it's blue sky, the sun is shining. Looking out the back door here as the chickens walk by and the ducks. So yeah, spring's coming. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm excited for today's topic. It's actually something that we've never talked about publicly. No, uh, not even. Maybe with Tamara, for Tamara, for sure. Yeah. But within... I was going to say, other than that, we haven't kind of pulled back the curtain on how we use our intuition to bring things about that yeah. we're really desiring, wanting to have. So today, um, we're not focusing on um, how we've done it in business. We're going to do another episode uh, focusing on that. But today, we're going to talk about in our personal lives. Yeah. We're powerful yeah. manifestors. And yeah. it's really cool to look back. We've got our notes sitting in front of us. These clear cut examples of what we've done to bring into our lives the things that we really want and needed in those times. So Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't remember. I just want to, sorry to interrupt. Yep. I, d I don't remember being conscious of doing that until I was, you know, in my early 30s. Like I I I don't think I was consciously aware of the things I was doing, focusing on and mm -hmm. putting my energy into and all the rest of that. So And so yeah. I was lucky because as soon as you tapped into your intuition as a young mother, it you just it rolled off onto me. And so I've been raised by you as here's an element, yeah. here's a skill as a woman that you possess and that you can grow and nurture and grow like a muscle, like we just yeah. said. So, And that's the beautiful thing about skills is that skills can be emulated. You can see somebody doing yeah. it. You can see the identifiable parts of what mm -hmm. they're doing. And so you, therefore you can do them yourself. So yeah. yeah, it's just cool. And speaking of intuition, like, come on, ladies, we, we are powerful creators. And as women, we are already naturally geared to access our intuition yeah. when we've got those big important questions and whether you feel connected to your intuition or not it's there for you to access so i, I yeah. love that's how we describe intuition is it, it's it's an accessible machine within you mm -hmm. that you can call upon when you're in need of an answer for your life yeah or you're searching for something or you're wanting to manifest or bring something into your life I want to put a caveat on there too, and it's that when you're stressed to get an answer to something, that does not help your intuition because then your your small small I'm gonna say reptilian brain gets in there and starts worrying and has anxiety and oh my god, am I gonna is that gonna happen? Am I gonna get that thing that yeah. I need or want? So I want to say to um, so anyways, we're just gonna dive into some of the the instances and stories that we've outlined um to share today and yeah. within them you'll see the framework framework of it yeah. the actions that were taken yeah so the first story i really but want to just share before oh, we dive in there? yeah okay so i remember because we sat down we made notes for today's episode and i i remember reading a book that was on your bookshelf called the power of intuition by Laura Day. Laura Day, and yeah. we, I was just like, oh, I remember that this book. It was a small square book, and I, I can see myself sitting at the little white table reading it. And excuse me, you're like, what, what book? And I just pulled it up on Google, and you're like, oh my god, yes. Yeah, I hardly so remember that. So here's a, a quick write up from Laura Day's book, and it's, it's old. It has been said that each individual's life boils down to a single question. Your life is the living of that question, the search for its answer and personal significance. Arriving at that ultimate question involves asking and answering numerous preliminary questions. Slowly, you begin to realize all the questions into relatedness until at last you distill them down to one. You do, no, you do this not by gaining information from empirical sources, but by questioning yourself and unearthing knowledge you didn't know you possessed. And I, I love really that. love that, unearthing, because yes. it's the unearthing part that starts that that ball rolling that opens you up to the synchronistic people, events, and circumstances that will come across your path. Yeah. And if you're aware that that is part of the answer to a question you've asked, then you can take the next step with it. Yeah. I, I guess I would 
define it that way and too. The formal definition of intuition is the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning, as well as a thing that one knows or considers likely from instinctive feeling rather than conscious reasoning. Yeah. And especially like I can relate right as a mother, we we've all had, or just as women in general, we've had those instances in life. And typically it comes down to like a safety thing or children mm -hmm. or an alertness that something's not right. And yeah. lo and behold, you run or you go into the other room and, and your intuition led you right where you needed to be. So it's, yeah. it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about it kind of on a bigger scale of out in the world, how you can do that because uh, I'm going to say a lot of the examples we're going to give you are of homes that we manifested mm -hmm. into our lives. So, but I'm going to give you, it wasn't just <laughs> like, oh, uh, driving in here, I found this home. So yeah. backstory, um, when we were looking at moving to Calgary, Erin would have been 10 or 11 years old and her brother, Jesse, my, my son, two years older. And so I made a trip down to Calgary to find a place to live. We were coming from Edson, small town in central Alberta. I pretty much felt like a a country hick, country bumpkin. You probably even, were. <laughs> <laughs> even coming to Calgary, which just seemed humongous to me, was just overwhelming the traffic, the exits, the off ramps, all the, all the things. So I, I went to stay at my sister's house, my sister Lori. She lived in the northwest of Calgary in an area called Silver Springs. And so my first day there, you know, she went off to work and I, I, I didn't even know where to start. So this is kind of like pre internet days, really. Like I, I bought a local community newspaper. I knew that I'd probably want a place in the Northwest, you know, to be uh, close proximity to her. That'd be good for me. That'd be good for my kids. Um, and I, 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 was looking at rental places within my budget. And I just, I just was completely overwhelmed. So she comes home from work my, after my first day. She said, so how did it go? I said, it's a big zero, like nothing happened. I don't know. I, I said, I don't, I don't even know where to start. I am just simply overwhelmed. So she said, okay, why don't we get a map of the area? Because I didn't even have a visual. Oh, was that Lori's idea? Yeah. Oh, of what that. the Northwest looked like. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe she already had a map. She said, let's look at a map. So, okay. I knew, I knew one thing. Uh, Aaron was going to be in elementary school. Jesse was going to be in junior high. I wanted a place. So here's the mother fairness. I wanted a place that would be equal walking distance <laughs> to school for the kids. There'd be no bickering or anything like that. So I was looking on the map, drew a circle in this community called Dalhousie. And I, I drew, so, you know, when I think about it now, I just think like, that's just, it was just a big, holy wow. I saw that there was this uh, junior high, this elementary school, and I drew a circle on the map that would be a great walking distance. I think it was two and a half blocks for each kid. And I said, okay, wow. You know, thinking that, wow, there's going to be a rental home just like right within that circle. I was really kind of, I felt naive, but I felt hopeful. hopeful. And I thought like, <laughs> that is, that is where I want to live. So uh, I was looking at ads the next day and this management company had a place listed in Silver Springs, which was really only like five, six blocks from Lori's house from where I was. I thought, well, I've got to start looking. So I went and looked at it and it was this townhouse in this complex and ah, it just didn't have the right vibe to me. And so I, I said to the agent, I said, yeah, it's, that's just not really feeling it. And they said, oh, okay. You know what? We actually just had a place come up in Dalhousie. It's a duplex. Would you like to look at it? And I thought, well, sure. But I was just like astounded. This place, now I didn't know it until I got back to Lori's to my map. Uh, this place was right in the center of this small little circle that I had drawn. At the time I was looking at it and um, I, I didn't know uh, that there was an elementary school close by or a junior high, but the place felt good. It had a good view. It had a good, good 
good lighting, good vibe. And um, so I said, I'll, I'm going to go back, look things over, you know, check in with myself. I'll give you a call later. Well, I go home, go back to Lori's and look, and it is right in the middle of my map. And I thought, perfect. It was the perfect price. It was the perfect amount of bedrooms. It was, it was perfect. And so that was one of my first, like, wow, that's, that's powerful. And I hadn't really sat down and made a list of all the amenities that the place needed to have. My, just my one focusing goal was that it needed to be, you know, kind of this equal distance and it needed to be in the Northwest. And I was really hoping for Dalhousie Mm -hmm. and I found that place right smack dab Mm -hmm. in the middle. I put a damage deposit drove back yeah. to Hudson and told I love that story. It. So we've talked about that story that a lot. Was, yeah. yeah. So amazing. As, so. And so gutsy, like as a single parent, uh, moving your kids to a, a big city. Yeah. And, and having the, the hope to be brave and courageous to find exactly what you needed for us as a family. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I've had to activate, I had to activate many that times. courage <laughs> as a single mom so many times. Yeah. So, so many times. Yeah. Stories to be told later on down the road. Yeah. So story yeah. number two. So fast forward, we ended up staying in that place for years. Yeah, a like, long time. Year, w- right until our, Jesse finished high school. Yeah. You finished high school yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, at one point, we moved on to a different community in Calgary. And this was, oh, what year was that? Well, I have it on the notation here because I, I ripped this page out of my journal. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2009. From our crate book. So, okay. Yeah, interesting. So we... I mean, we won't get into it in this episode, but mom and I have had so many businesses and ideas together. And at this stage in our business together, we really wanted a creative space, like a studio for us to anchor in our creativity and our offerings. At this point, we were talking about maybe some workshops for mm-hmm. young women and yeah. and women for, you know, developing them developing themselves all this so was this a day that we were probably feeling a little frustrated i think when we're frustrated and feeling stuck we typically can either go one way we can (laughs) be frustrated and stuck and fight with each other or we dig in and we get clear on what we're wanting yeah because it's that lack of clarity that breathes frustration in us especially as highly creative women right yeah so yes i know you're pointing to it november 14th 2008 at 1 30 p.m so we even wrote down the time so here is what we said we wanted and you know for those watching this on youtube i'll just hold it up here it's this page so and we signed it and here's what it says art studio space we want a 24 by 12 space minimum with a sink and a bathroom we want lots of windows lots of light that gets lots of sun. We want high ceilings and exposed beams. We want hardwood floors. We want to be able to paint it to the colors that we want. We want it to be in a vibrant, energizing community, close to a walking path, close to nature would be ideal. We want it to be maybe a heritage building or looks like one. So with that history, we want some place where our cats can come. (laughs) That's cute. We want the area to be private. We want to like, you know, a private door for security. And our budget was $350 to $750 per month. That was negotiable. We wanted to have free street parking for workshops. We wanted to be working with an amicable, friendly owner, available December 1st. And we want to be able to launch our Global Spirit Designs company then in January of 2009. And we said, we love it. Thank you. And we each signed it. We cannot wait. And then we decided, okay. Let's just go for a little drive. Yeah. That was just, we liked to drive down Memorial Drive. It was along the river. It was a beautiful area. And we were going to go to this little coffee shop, the Lazy Loaf and Kettle, yeah. and just grab a coffee. But this is what we t- we typically do. Yeah. Like, And whether you guys believe in the secret or the power of manifestation, whatever you believe in, you have to believe that your thoughts are powerful and your feelings are powerful. 
So this is what we we do. Like we would make these lists and then let's go out and seek that feeling that we want to feel. Yeah. And typically th- like that always is driving. Like for us, driving has been freedom. Yeah. When we didn't live in the country and were yearning to get back to the country, we would go for a drive in the country. And so it, this was no different. And I want to say, and I think if I was to look at what the driving represents, it's some form of action. Like yeah. it's some form of movement. I think yes. where people get stuck is just sitting, sitting in the frustration of, I need this thing and I don't know how to get it. Totally. Uh, Driving just puts you out there, puts your eyes on the world in a different way. So yeah, we got in the car and uh, And got moving (laughs) and got moving and thought, well, let's just stop in at the Lazy Loaf because we love this place. We love that community. We loved going there for coffee. So we pull in and just ready to park. And for whatever reason, looked up because this building, this this heritage Heritage type building building (laughs) in this wonderful little cul-de-sac with free parking had a for rent sign in the window. And I looked at Aaron and I said, what? Look at that. And we thought, wow, that's, that's interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Could this be it? Yeah. Yeah. And so we knew there was a side, there was a private entry, a locked door. Of course it was open for business hours. And we knew that the owners of the building as we investigated, had their office up there. So we thought, well, just like, what the heck? Let's inquire. Yeah. So we did. And we got a tour. (laughs) And you guys, it was perfect. (laughs) Literally, was not the space 24 by 12. It it was every, let's just cut to the chase. It It was was everything everything on our list. The only thing was the cats. I don't think we ever brought our cats. (laughs) No, because no, but we, we didn't. probably could have if we <laughs> wanted to, but yeah, that didn't make sense. Yeah, but you guys, it was everything, everything, and, and we like we transformed. Like I don't know what was there before, like some professional yeah. office. We Insurance transformed office. that oh. space. Like we we brought our full like faux finishing. We did hardwood, like faux hardwood floors. We had this gorgeous vintage light robin's egg blue on the walls. We brought in. Like we any antique lights, furniture uh, from like Kijiji, like this. Oh yeah, all the Christmas yeah, lights on the ceiling. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. it was magical. And we went on to we taught some workshops. We would work out of there, but it it was literally a dream come true for us, right? It, it totally was, and it just reminded us of our power in creating. Yes, when we have that clarity. Yes, we and we definitely had. And let me just say that. It was within 25 minutes of both of us writing that list, signing that list, that we actually were saying yes to a space. Yeah. So talk about fast. Yeah. Like that was, that was like, I just, we just could hardly, hardly believe it. But then, I mean, certainly feeling gratitude and excitement. And so the feeling that came with us finding that place, we savored every time we went there. It was just like, you know, you had a piece of chocolate a good chocolate in the drawer and you can pull it out and (laughs) and enjoy it and that's what it felt like going Mm -hmm. to that studio every time we loved having people up there but we just loved the feel and the atmosphere so and I think that was really wonderful even looking back like we weren't there for years no and we didn't need to be the lesson in that experience was that we could and we did yeah and so that strengthened that intuitive muscle within us both and especially working together because yeah. like on your notes here, I have the power of two. And I, we've said this in other episodes. We can be powerful creators when we are working together. And the same goes for the opposite when we're both feeling in the dumps or like yeah. not so hot. That gets multiplied. That can be powerful too. <laughs> on the so other side of that. we have to choose wisely. Yeah, <laughs> I know. totally. I know. And I, I, think, uh, I think I even say it sometimes. Okay, Aaron, we need to get on the same page as each other. Oh, and I say that too. Mom. Okay. okay. <laughs> so that's a literal thing. Like we literally yeah. mean on the, on same, the same page. page. Like if we yeah. were to make a, a list of all the wants. Yeah. And, uh, so, okay. We have a third story. Oh my gosh. I this love this story. This is even far, more far out. <laughs> oh, totally. So do you want to start it? Yes. Okay. okay. So we were renting and uh, yeah, so I had just met Jean and he was living in a different city. So all of us were looking for a place in the country to move out to. Um, it was Jean's dream to return to the country. It was our dream for too many years to get back to the country. So but we weren't ready to buy. So we were looking for a rental. And just randomly on Facebook, um, we saw someone had shared it this log house for rent east of Airdrie 
And these photos were magical. Yeah. Like it was, it was like the land and the log house and the architecture, the design. It, it honestly, like we saw these photos and we're like, there's no way, there's no way this yeah. could work out because it, it was just so beautiful. And I want to interject here. We weren't just looking for a place anywhere. Sean did a lot of work in Red Deer and in Calgary. So we needed a place that was between Red Deer and Calgary. Yeah. Uh, wasn't going to be like west towards the mountains. Right. Like yeah, I remember that. We needed it to be in a certain place while this place was. So we saw, you know, we were reading the ad. And so there was no address that we could, you know, do a, a drive by. But because it was a private. Yeah. People were living there as a private residence. Yeah. And she um, was sharing. The owner was sharing it kind of like privately through friends and friends of friends. And so it was one of our friends who had shared it, yeah. which saw it. But she had a phrase in there and she said, it's about midway between, I don't know if she said Strathmore, Chestmere and this other place. And and so that really hit me. And she said, as the crow flies, this place is about halfway. And so I said to Erin, let's go drive and see if we can find it. Yeah. So, <laughs> because here's the thing, we had reached out to her and said, we're really, really interested, but we couldn't go out and see it with her schedule for another like week or something. Yeah. We and thought, we didn't want to appear, it. we didn't want to appear to be like too overzealous and be like, <laughs> can you send us the address? Cause we want to drive there right now and go look at it to like be in the feeling of this place. Yeah. But so we, we didn't do that. We said, so yeah. So we had that Let's information find it. and you guys, when we were excited <laughs> about something, like literally we'll just drop everything and we're like, Okay, hop in the car. Hop in the car. We're Let's go for a drive. <laughs> so we went for a drive. So we left Calgary. I think yeah. we got like a Tim Hortons latte, yeah. some Tim bits, and we're like, okay, let's, let's turn drive. this into an afternoon. We're going to find this damn place. <laughs> yeah. And so let me tell you, there was a lot of miles got, and country yeah. it's in the road space <laughs> where this, the owner had listed, you know, as the crow flies. So we started, okay, so we were just kind of listening to our intuition and said, let's go to this area. So, you know, this is still back in the day when you had map, excuse me, maps in your car. And so we started just going down some of the township roads and the range roads and just kind of doing a grid pattern to cover everything. And like, the, like let's just be clear though. There's like a 20 kilometer radius, a possibility where oh, this could yeah. be. Yeah. 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 And we didn't, we didn't drive straight there. Oh, like no. we were, we realized now we were a little bit too north and then we were a little bit too south. And so how long were we driving before we were like, okay, uh, let's give this one more shot? Yeah. I think we were about an hour and a half in coming on two hours. An hour and, a half. Yeah. And, I, and we were both kind of looking at each other and going, oh, I don't know if we're going to find it today. And then one of us said, one of us said let's okay, just... 10 more minutes, yeah. just 10 more minutes. Yeah. So we were on this road and I just said, like, let's just go a little further east. Yeah. Well, it, two, two to three kilometers east. Holy, there it was. But but before, yeah. okay, I remember driving on a little hill and you come down this hill yes. and then there's this beautiful body of water on the yes. right hand side. Yeah. And then the house, and yeah, which wasn't it. And, and at that point, we're like, okay, we'll just turn, we'll turn around like up here. Yeah. And we go <laughs> and then through the trees, there's this log house and... It felt magical. Uh, I get goosebumps, I, I thinking, get goosebumps of that moment. thinking of that moment too. Yeah. Because yeah. like that, first of all, finding that, it's like we were creating and locking in for ourselves that this was meant for us. Yeah. And then finding it just like, okay, like it's written, it's done. This is, this is the house that we will move into. Yeah. And being in the feeling of that, I, yeah. that was just, yeah, because it, it meant a, a new, a new life for us too. Well, like it was it, a completely it different that change. next stage, and with Jean and I, and just it just, wow. yeah, you got pregnant in that house. Yeah, uh, Luca was born when we were living in that house. Yeah, there were some horses on the property that just added to the ambiance. We had access to going out and being with them at any time during the day, which we used to do a lot. Yeah. But it was a beautiful place. And so we weren't there more than, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half. And it was far enough east that it was it was 
putting extra stress on Jean for driving. And driving yeah. We, we yeah. thought we need to be closer to the main highway between Edmonton, Red Deer, Calgary kind of thing. So begrudgingly, we said, okay, let's just figure out what we... Well, not really begrudgingly. <laughs> well, no. I, I hated to leave because of the horses. So I only, I, know say you it, did. I only say it that way. But it was it, yeah. it was the best decision for the family. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I know. those. We You talk about those four little fillies. And I think we'll actually do an episode <laughs> on those four little fillies because... Oh, uh, there was four yearling fillies on the property, yeah. and just anyways, that's stories for stories and pictures for another day of the magic that but, happened with that. So next story, yep, yeah, it was time for us to move again and find another place, and so um, yeah, around this that one was time, you finding yeah. this ad that was listed and, in the wrong place. Yeah, and this time, like acreages aren't that easy to find, right? And we were looking for something pretty specific here we are like we're three adults one baby we work from home so we needed some sort of office or studio space we wanted to be in the country we didn't want to be too far from the city pickens were pretty slim you know on like rent faster or had to be able to bring websites. dogs yes. we, we had one and dog cats. at the time and cats and we had cats. many cats yeah still do and so i think i you could say obsessive like i get mildly obsessive when <laughs> i'm looking for something <laughs> It's like I won't stop miles until, like, until, until I find extremely it. Extremely. So, maybe. well, I mean, I was a mom hat. We, yeah. like, Luca was young. I'm like, okay, if we're moving, like, I'm going to find it. And so, for, I don't know, maybe two or three days, as soon as I woke up, I would check out Rent Faster, any new listings in the area. Nothing popped up. And then here it is for some reason. So, we're, you know, around Calgary area. For some reason, I scrolled on that map. And went and looked at listings like way up north in Alberta, like eight or nine hours away away from where we are. And for some reason, I see this ad for this like red ranch bungalow style house. And I click on it and I see the pictures and I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect. The number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, it's got a walkout basement. Yeah. It's got a living area for you. It had a studio space oh, for us. We could yeah. have a gym. We could have chickens, the dogs, the cats. It was a dream and it close proximity to Airdrie. And, but I'm like, oh, but I mean, obviously we're not moving way up north, but then I get reading more of the description and it says just 10 minutes northeast of Airdrie, Alberta. And I'm thinking like, what, how is this, how is this possible? And so I reach out to the the homeowners right away and I'm saying like, so I'm confused. This this listing is listed way up in northern Alberta, but the description says Airdrie. Where is it? And they said, oh, it's just 10 minutes northeast of Airdrie. And I just like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And I I was very aggressive, excitedly. And I said, OK, we are interested. When are you showing it? Because we need to come see this place. And so immediately, I think it was like two or three days, they were doing showings. Yeah. And we brought the whole family. And we walked through. And we just knew. like this is our next place that we're going to be living in. And so it was an, it's an older couple who owns the house and, you know, whoever was doing the listing on rent faster just didn't have it in the, in the right position on the map. So yeah. like how other people find it, I, I don't even know, but what matters is that I did. <laughs> so reached out. here's the thing though. And the, here's a, a piece that you missed out after you got off talking with the owner, we hopped in the car and oh, yeah, we did. did we actually have an address or were we just going to find it um, again? I we think... had the range road, but not the number. Oh, right. The property number. So we took all these back roads from the log house that we were at. That's right. And just, again, started driving, driving, driving. And yeah, we found it. And we're just like. Because we're looking at the pictures of it and we're like, yeah, yeah that looks that like looks it. That looks like it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So. Oh, that's I right. mean, it confirmed it. Um, and so then we were able to say, okay, let's, how far are we off the highway? Oh my gosh. We're this only like perfect. four kilometers off the highway. Yeah. And we actually are only 10 minutes Northeast of Airdrie. And we were so excited. So when we came to look at it, they were doing another showing that day. And oh my gosh, we were just like, I, I don't we know have, how we're going we to have to have it. We have to have it. It's so, perfect. Yeah. 
in our excitement and our exuberance, we sold them on us. On us. Like, we're amazing. You know, <laughs> we're we just are. amazing we're people. Great. <laughs> and we got yeah. this baby and da, 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 and all this yeah. stuff. But anyways. And that's um, where we currently are. Yeah. And and so it just, like, it's it's powerful. It's powerful when you tune in to that gut instinct, that that intuition, when you've got that clarity. I, I just think... Uh, and so we we will be using this yeah. when we're ready to purchase land. And uh, we've done this a lot. I mean, we've been where we are now for years. Like Yeah, what, like Lucas six. six. So yeah. yeah, almost six. And and we go through stages where... We go driving. We go driving <laughs> and trying to get a sense of like, where do we want to end up? Where do we want to buy and build? And there's a couple different areas. But when we're... Yeah, when... And we're not quite ready in this moment to go ahead with that. But there's so many steps that we've been taking to ready ourselves for when we're ready to, 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 yeah. to buy and in the right area that feels right. Yeah. And we're absolutely confident that we will find the exact yeah. thing we were looking for. We have so much evidence of that, so much evidence of it. So we've gone driving and we'll go to an area and we'll say, does this feel like where we no, this isn't quite it. So we're in the stage now where we're getting clarity around it. And I think the clarity and the circumstance of being able to will probably arrive right at the same time. Yep. We'll just take action and, you know, it'll be a done deal when it happens. Of that, I'm completely 100% sure. Certain. And yeah. and our feeling is so powerful too. Like, and you, I'm sure you guys have all read this. And if not, our brains do not know the difference between what we're thinking or feeling versus what has actually happened. So just yeah. think about that for a second. Yeah. Our brains don't know the difference. If you tell yourself and describe your reality, like your brain and body think that that is the truth. Yeah. So what do you want to fill your mind and body with? It's yeah. your choice. Yeah. And there's a, there's a part in the back of our brain here called the reticular activating system. And I'm going to, I'm going to, Give you an example that most of you have probably experienced. You get a car, you get a new car, or you get a new used car. Whatever you get, you get a car, and you and you start noticing all the other cars on the road that are like this car. Yeah. You know, the white, this, that, or the other thing. And so, I think part of the process of having the clarity to write down the elements that you're looking for in the goal that you're wanting to achieve. It activates the reticular activating system in your brain and it alerts you to things that line up with it. And because I think, you know, we live in a busy world. We live in an information intensive world. You know, as you're driving sometimes, you go, how did I get from here to here? Like, I don't even remember. Like, we just can zone out really easily. But writing it down activates that part of the brain that pays attention to the things that line up with it. So, and just yeah. even like the act of writing, how many, like, how many of us don't write anymore because we're on our phones yeah. or we're on our laptops and we're missing that power of like that thought and from our brains onto paper, like that strengthens that firing. And so, absolutely. And we, that could be a whole other episode too, but like yeah. that is important. So get off your devices. Yeah. <laughs> so pen and paper. Pen and paper. Get, yeah. And there's the other thing about writing is it connects physically, it connects you, it connects the wiring in your body that hardwires you for things. You know, humans are evolving, but we haven't we haven't evolved beyond that. There's still a really deep connection mm -hmm. when we can do something with our hands in the process of uh, yeah. bringing things about so so then the first one we talked about is clarity second one is focus like feel on it and then the third one we've got here is action yeah and always you mentioned take that. action uh, and I, I, liken to, I liken it to every morning when I'm dropping Luca off at his day home and all the kids are getting their snowsuits on, getting ready to walk to go to kindergarten. And you can just, you can feel like they're in this small little space and like they're getting, their energy's rising, but the room isn't big enough to contain them. And it's like, okay. And Larissa and I always joke, it's like, okay, time to open the, the gate. Like get the kids outside, they need to start moving forward, yeah. right? Somewhere to channel that energy. And it's no different for when you're wanting to manifest something, right? Like Absolutely. don't just sit, like you, like 
the natural laws of the universe require us to move. Absolutely. <laughs> Nature does not stand, stand still. still. <laughs> Energy does not stand still. Yeah. And I also like how you just use that phrase moving forward, because when Aaron and I were doing some work with equine assisted learning, that was always a phrase that was used is because horses always have the impetus to move forward. Yeah. And so working with horses helps us get into that flow of we have to move forward. Nothing happens in a static state. We're either moving forward or we're going backwards. So yeah, so I would say, and Aaron just outlined it, yeah, we activate our intuition by the clarity and we focus on it and not just focus on it, like reading the words, like feeling the feeling of what it would have, what it would feel like to have that thing happen, manifest, create, take the action, whatever that is, like even just ask yourself, what can I do next? And that's just a simple question that your inner self will give you an answer to go yeah. for a walk mm -hmm. take a shower yeah how many i how many ideas pop out when you're in the shower for us driving is our we talk uh, it through way, yeah. way to do it yeah and then i want to say be grateful mm -hmm. like thank thank yourselves thank the universe thank all the sy synchronistic things that happened along the way that led you to you know, bringing about or manifesting that thing. Because they're, they're yeah. happening whether, regardless of whether you're aware of them or not. And so like step into the game and have fun with it because it can yeah. feel like that. So why wouldn't you? Magical. <laughs> it is. Magical. Yeah. I actually think, I think we get a high from it when we want to manifest. So we're going to talk about it in a business sense yeah. because we've done some things like launched an international yeah. magazine and <laughs> All these different things, and those things took courage and having some confidence in ourselves, clarity and whatnot. Mm -hmm. However, we highly and definitely use our intuition all the when time, bringing them out. So, uh, so like that kind of rounds us out. As you're listening to this, if you've got some crazy stories of following your yeah. intuition, write us, email us, or comment, or yeah. we'd love to hear, and we can share them as well. And and then if you're listening and you're curious, like, how do I get better at accessing, unearthing my intuition? Oh my gosh, just Google it. There's tons. I mean, you could read a book like that Laura Day one that we, that we had. It was literal exercises yeah. to like start with baby, like baby steps of just like getting in touch with that part of yourself and then strengthening it and proving to yourself that you can do it. You gain confidence and you, you know, move forward with it. So there's lots of ways to, to grow intuition within yourself. I know. And it's a skill we all possess. Yeah. And for some it's, it's untouched, it's unresourced. And I, I think you had read in that description at the beginning, it's a way to unearth knowledge. And I think yeah. our psyches, our bodies, our selves, our greater selves are full of knowledge, ready and available for us to access. We just need to call it into play. Absolutely. And so yeah. those are the ways that we've done it. Maybe you've got some completely different ways that you bring it about. Tell us about it. Tell them. us about it. Yeah. yeah. This was yeah. so fun. Yeah, I know. I love this. I loved recounting and feeling again the excitement of all those different things. What do we want to create next? Yeah. Well. Let's grab a pen. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Thanks, guys.